This video was originally recorded May 2018 at Tibet House US in New York City. To watch the full archive recording, please visit tibethouse.us. likes to tell you about what anxiety mm -hmm. depression well traumas you know every day we haven't trauma. even talked about trauma yet. yeah but trauma is every day but then trauma we know is that's tomorrow. what tomorrow is tomorrow <laughs> but what was addiction. the title was what to, uh, anxiety a depression a anxiety addiction a addiction a a and and depression and depression mm -hmm. and then love relief Love, relief. Love, relief. And? Understanding. 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 But which is, which is which of the three of us? Well, <laughs> uh, Sharon's relief. Sharon's relief. Sharon's oh, relief. my goodness. Your love. No. Uh, and I'm understanding. Oh, really? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I don't think so. <laughs> Dr. Love. Love. Uh, so, so I was just, uh, I was just cheered up. Everybody was looking pretty serious. <laughs> Everybody does look serious, you know. And then everyone had a moment of pure joy today. Not quite everyone. So, <laughs> what? Not no, quite I, everyone. Most of them. Most of them. A lot of hands went up. And uh, and uh, th therefore, those who had that feeling of pure joy, you know, Mark, you said early on in saying that I was supposed to disagree with you. Yeah about how after you have something or other, then you're going to be the same as you always were. Right. Right? You said that. Yeah. So, but really, what did you mean by that? You know? Then you also said this thing about how, you know, you sort of find in there something that always seems to be the same. Mm -hmm. you, you were telling your dad. Yeah. And he was about to pass out. Mm. <laughs> and... Uh, and definitely, that's a situation where you drop out from feeling that you that same point of view is in charge of things. You know, death is the ultimate one of those. You know, the ultimate one. But actually, we all experience that right away. You know, I'm always very worried about people who think they're enlightened. To me, that's a very worrisome condition. And um, I know a few of them actually. <laughs> And, um, and it's really problematic because then, you know, you have to convince yourself that everything you do is just really great, <laughs> unless you redefine enlightenment as meaning nothing different. <laughs> and, um, and then I guess you can get away with it. <laughs> In other words, if you think that, therefore, being enlightened means that you continue to be really stupid. <laughs> Well, you know, that's my excuse. <laughs> you, know, you know, my, my excuse is uh, about understanding, you know. Um, uh, my, or no, not really about, about, well, you didn't put happiness in there at all. You know? Relief, you said. Relief, relief. Well, relief is happiness, right? Yeah, love is Buddha happiness. Buddha was careful. Well, no, love is not happiness. <laughs> <laughs> love is, love is, Love is, is wishing happiness on the, on the people who you and see as that that unhappy. Is that a state of happiness? And, but that's right, but you're right, and people don't <laughs> say that, you know. In other words, people mix up love with uh, longing for the happiness of the beloved, and they feel that um, it's based on somehow ignoring your own misery. And then where, that way you can be loving, because then you just care about the other one being happy. But, but, then, but then they need you to feel that they're happy. So in a way, you are perceiving them as sharing your misery to start with. <laughs> so then you would sort of lock them into misery by loving them, by wishing they were somehow other than they were, than they are. And... Um, Really, you're joining them in their misery, basically. <laughs> so isn't it nice when someone comes along and says, uh, Oh, I love you. And, uh, and uh, what do you think about me? <laughs> <laughs> they tend to do that, right? And then they feel that the beloved is supposed to make them happy. 
So this is what people feel too guilty to say when they feel that moment of pure joy. Now, when you all felt that moment of pure joy, come on, all of you felt one. Everybody felt a moment of pure joy. And then you looked around nervously because you were, what, what terrible thing is going to follow on that? Because you're brainwashed that joy is illegal. And it's, uh, it's unreasonable. And the real story is misery. I mean, look at, look at the government that we have, you know. <laughs> and not just us, you know. Then there's like Syria, there's all these terrible things, and there's all the past distractions and holocausts and horrible genocides and oh, God knows what. Someone sent a picture. On the, I had a picture on my phone today in between airplanes. I was in Chicago, you know, hoping to catch my, and expecting a miracle of my bag being shifted from one plane to another in 37 minutes, <laughs> which it did. It did. Yeah. did it. I it's couldn't believe it. And that was a moment of joy. <laughs> 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 Although that was only because I was ignoring what is in my bag, which is a bunch of dirty clothes, <laughs> which have to be washed, you know. So, no, but I... This video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, including special trips with Robert Thurman and friends with geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Delek, and thanks for tuning in.